Hey everybody, how's it going? Daniel here. So today we are taking a look at the new M1 MacBook Pro and here it is. This is the one configured to 16 gigs of memory and I also have a terabyte SSD on this. You can actually see that right here, it's opened a little and I actually have a cool story to share with you guys. Actually, it's not cool at all, but it's unfortunate. So earlier today, FedEx delivered this package and uh, they didn't knock or anything, but I realized when I checked the tracking information on my phone that they had actually dropped it off. I went to check and the package wasn't there. So it was actually stolen shortly after FedEx dropped it off. It was a little weird because FedEx had literally just dropped it off, but uh, I saw the cameras and I saw the car that stole it and the people that stole it. I went out searching and after about 20 minutes of driving, I actually found them basically forced them to stop and I got my package back. Interestingly enough, I found them by a UPS truck. So basically what they were doing is following all the trucks and then stealing the packages right after the truck dropped it off. This is just a word of warning. If you're expecting any of these, they don't have signature confirmation. So make sure to basically have a eye out for FedEx like a hawk because you don't know what time they're gonna drop it off and they do not require signature. With that said, let's go ahead and open this right here. And here it is, I got the space gray, mainly space gray because my current 15 inch MacBook Pro is silver. So just to spice it up a little bit and differentiate between the two. And here we're gonna just get designed by Apple in California. And let's see what's in here. Any cool Apple stickers or anything here? We do have space gray Apple stickers, which is nice. And then that's about it. Just some booklets and stuff, nothing special in there. We have our USB-C charger here. Basically the same thing we've gotten in the past. Nothing special with this one either. You can see it right there. And of course, just a USB-C charging cable. So nothing super special here, very basic. The special thing this year, of course, is the fact that Apple has moved over to their own chips. And I'm actually quite excited for that, mainly because I actually love how good the iPhones and iPads are at editing 4K video, at doing everything without getting hot or anything. So what I'm hoping to see with this laptop is basically being able to do all the workflow that I do without the fans kicking on and being able to use it on my lap without it burning and also without the battery running out in just a couple of hours. So here is the laptop. First impressions feels basically the same as all the 13 inch pros we've gotten in the past couple of years. Two USB-C ports on the left side. On the right side, we have a headphone jack and that just about covers all of the ports. I considered getting the MacBook Air, but I actually wanted to really test that how it has a fan compared to the MacBook Air, which is just cooled with a heat sink. I did wanna see if this has more performance than that one and if it's worth the extra price. You do also get, compared to the MacBook Air, you do get slightly better speakers. You get a slightly better display that's 500 instead of 400 nits. So there's a couple of other upgrades aside from just having the fan. Now you can see how quickly it actually booted up there and that's actually already quite impressive. The keyboard, of course, is the new keyboard. No more butterfly keyboard or anything like that. I actually never minded the butterfly keyboard. I thought it was fine. This one does feel a little bit better though, more like a traditional keyboard, which is obviously, of course, better. As far as here, I'm gonna go ahead and set things up. We're gonna go ahead and select our Wi-Fi network here. Gonna hit enter. And of course, there's really actually, you know, nothing that's changed here. Everything is the exact same thing. We still have the touch bar, which like many people, I also don't really like. We don't have a slightly newer or fuller screen. So it's only safe to assume that we're gonna get nicer laptops very soon within the next six months or so. So it says data and privacy. Okay, continue. Migration assistant. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and actually do this with my old laptop so we can see what the process is with the M1 and see what it transfers and doesn't transfer. So let's go ahead and click okay. It does say recommends connecting to AC power. I'm not gonna connect it for now, just while we get this set up, I'll connect it once it starts transferring and then I'll pause the video and come back when it's done. But here, it's just gonna go ahead and look for my Mac. On my Mac, I have opened up the exact same program. So on that one, I actually clicked to another Mac. Now it appears right here. Go ahead and click on it and then click continue. So it just told me that I have to update this to the latest version of Big Sur. So I'm trying to do that, but nothing's really happening here. All right, so let's plug this right in here. There we go. And strangely enough, it seems to like not be happening, like nothing's happening. So let's go ahead and back up continue again. And so again, it says that um, the backup was created with 11.0.1. It is recommended that you update this machine before, you know, transferring everything. So let's go ahead and update. 
It does say recommended, so I guess I could skip it, but every time I click update, it's not, nothing's happening. So I'm gonna go ahead and click again, continue. And I'm gonna go ahead and skip it, see what happens. So let's do that. It basically asked me on the other screen to confirm that this is the number that appears on my Mac and that is correct. So here it's asking me the information to transfer and I'm gonna go ahead and transfer everything. I kind of wish to start just a fresh new thing, but uh, I do want everything to transfer to see how it works. It's asking me to set a secure password to log into this Mac and there we go. It's using peer-to-peer -peer connection through my Wi-Fi network. And now it says preparing to transfer user documents. So I, I would say it's about, let's say 80 gigs or so, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna assume that for now because that's about what I have in there right now. Most of it's on iCloud and I will come back once everything is done and I'll see what happened and uh, what transferred and didn't transfer just in case. All right, so the migration just completed and now this computer is actually restarting. It did that as soon as I kind of just tapped it to check if it was completed and it was. All right, so in total, it took a little bit over an hour and there we go. Now it is actually finally complete. It says migration complete. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and click done. Let's see what else we got here here to do put in my password there we go and let's see uh just to see what's here and what's not what opens what doesn't open let's see what the deal here is with the m1 chip i uh, can't connect to icloud open apple id preference i guess i gotta put my apple id password now it's going ahead and setting up my icloud account so here it asks us if we want to turn on file vault disk encryption and allowed my icloud account to unlock my disk i want to go ahead and just continue Go ahead and set up Touch ID here in the top right hand corner. Works just like your iPhone. It is now setting up my Mac. Let me see here if the fans are going. They are not. And here we go, we are in. It's got my wallpaper, it's got my apps here. Let me sign in again to Apple. Gonna go ahead and turn on Keychain, continue, and then find my Mac. It says this location services are off, so I'm opening security and privacy here to change that. Enable location services. For some reason, location services was off. Let's go ahead and turn that on for basically everything here and not transmit. We have a little folder here saying relocated items. Let's see what's in here. Usually I always just delete this, but just check in if there's anything important. I don't think there ever is anything important in here but you never know. And let's go ahead and delete this. And let's see here, apps. Let's see if uh, anything in particular is just not transferred. It looks like everything's transferred given that I do have Adobe apps. I'm gonna see if anything here opens. So let's go ahead and open Photoshop. It is still indexing the computer. We're gonna go ahead and open it manually. Actually, let's open up After Effects, let's see. It says uh, to open After Effects 2020, you need to install Rosetta. Do you want to install it now? Yes, and basically Rosetta enables Intel-based Mac or Intel-based features to run on Apple Silicon Macs. Reopening applications after installation is required to start using Rosetta. So now it is gonna go ahead and install Rosetta, which is the important thing that we need to be able to run any of this. Let's see how long that's, oh, very quick. That was like seconds, so that's quite nice. Again, well, let's actually open Illustrator this time. Verifying, let's see what happens here. Definitely taking its time. It's not opening it quickly, but I'm wondering if that's just because it's the first time or who knows, I guess we will see. So yeah, this is the second time we've gotten the beach ball here. And the first time was during the installation a couple minutes ago. So, uh, so far, I mean, you know, things aren't looking great, but given that it's the first boot up, first time opening these things, it gets a, a few points here. I'm gonna go ahead and sign into Creative Cloud and see what happens. For some reason, the pop-up here for signing into Adobe keeps on popping up even after signing in. So I'm gonna go ahead and see, yeah. So it's just not, it is not signing me in despite me signing in. So I wonder if that is a bug or something. Let me go ahead and try After Effects and all set. Here we go back, waiting and are we working? I think it's working. So in this one, it did work and uh, seems to be no issues. Now that it is logged in, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, reopen this up to see how that goes. All right. So 
So definitely opening up without a problem. Let's go ahead and try Photoshop. All right, let's go ahead and open that. See how long that takes. Verifying. And all of these are gonna verify for the first time just because they've just been installed on this MacBook. Let's see while that opens, let's go ahead and try Final Cut as well. Let's see if that opens good. Verifying Final Cut, verifying motion. Let's open that too. All right, so we do have Final Cut here and we have all the projects that I had, which is nice. So everything's did transfer over very nicely. Nothing uh, seems to be missing, at least upon first inspection. I don't think there's anything super important that's not on iCloud in this little folder that appeared here. So I think I'm good. Now let's see Photoshop here. It is resized in a weird way and uh, it does seem to be working perfectly fine. There we go, there it is. No issues whatsoever. Let's go ahead and close that. Right here, motion opened up as well. And let's go ahead and close that. And now let's go ahead and try it again. So Final Cut, Motion, and then let's go ahead and open up Photoshop. Just to get an idea. So already Final Cut and Motion both opened up. And now Photoshop's opened up. So you can kind of see it there. Everything is working super fast, super quick. And um, I'm pretty excited so far. I'm looking forward to testing this out a little bit more especially the battery life and seeing if this actually heats up in any case. Let me see here if anything is warm. It is warm underneath. There's like some slight hint of warmth. So it's not hot anymore, but it's like getting cool. So it was hot sometime while it was transferring here by itself. The screen again is 500 nits, so it goes pretty bright. This is gonna be good enough for indoor work with lighting or um, maybe some outdoor work. I still wouldn't use this in the sun. So let's go ahead and quit that, quit that. Very nice and quick. I'm gonna go ahead and connect this to a external monitor, see how quickly that connects, if there's any difference compared to my 2018 MacBook Pro. But before that, let's do the typical test here of opening a bunch of apps. So let's just go ahead and actually just open up everything that I have here on my dock. So let's go ahead and try that and see how that goes. And things begin to open up almost instantly, honestly. Even though it's the first time opening a lot of these, it is just blazing through all of this. Having some trouble here with Affinity Photo. There we go. And there we go. Let's see if the computer's still responsive. It appears to be. It's working. Look at that. It's doing a really good job here. So yeah, I mean, it's really impressive how good it is so far. Uh, definitely, I think this requires a little bit more of testing, you know, to see how it compares to the other one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But aside from that, that concludes this unboxing here. It was just kind of a quick look at the computer itself and uh, just seeing real quick what the setup is like, transferring over files from your old Mac to your new Mac. You will not have any issues, at least, you know, nothing that I can see here encountered between transferring from an Intel based Mac to a silicon based Mac. And now let's see how quickly we can close all this and then we shall end the video. So can we just do all? There we go. Look at that. That's speedy. That's really good. And here we have a problem for Spark, but oh well, at least it opened up. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.